Hello again, uh, Brian here, working on project 606. We're trying to wrap up the end of our control arm session here. It's been a long, long time fitting all these tubes, mocking up tires, getting the knuckles all prepared. This all started with the front clip on and just a tire kind of where we wanted it. And we took all the measurements, wrote them down, took off the hood, set up what we've got here is a little jig for our knuckle. At one point it was just this. And now we've worked our upper and lower control arms on, which was not completely easy. We got really precise measurements and fitments we needed to acquire in order to make our goal. The, end, the finishing touches here on this shock mount. We've got the upper mocked up in its spot. It's just the small tabs here. It's really important that this upper shock mount is exactly symmetrical to the passenger side. So what we do here is we've got a little plumb bob measured up on this furthest forward and I've done that already to that side and I've made comparison measurements to make sure that's exactly the same. And from that one measurement reflects how everything else where it will land. So it's really important to make that one correct along with everything but <laughs> emphasis on that one there. And from that that decides our landing location for our bottom mount. As you can see here, I've got some tabs kind of pre-made, real basic spacer, but I made sure to use the same one I had on the other side so we have really good consistency. Yeah, and from there I just uh, cut out some really, really lame square tabs, went ahead and stuck that in our tube notcher and made a partial fit for our front plate of our lower mount. And as you can see, that fits pretty good right there, but we've got a good three quarters of an inch to close that up yet. And that's for both sides, front and back. And so what I'll do is just bring down each end of that until it closes up onto that lower mount. And that part's pretty much golden. As you see here, we've got a little bit of unfinished parts. What I've got yet to do is take this tube and shorten it a bit more, just take a little more material out of this side so it'll come out more, which will in turn make the space between these two tubes longer. Definitely something you want to finish first before you fit the brackets themselves, otherwise they'll end up too short. I'll knock off some material on here, get these back in, mark them up for how much material I want to take off and just kind of work them in till they each come in contact with our mock-up shock tube here. From there, I can drill holes and create the shape. Sounds pretty simple. Takes a little bit of time if you want it to look good and fit right, so that's the way we do it. Let's talk about this quick change we're in a little bit. This is from Winter's Performance. We use these in pretty much every car that requires a quick change. This is the same concept as pretty much every quick change out there. In this back cover, which I'm going to take off, we got some gears. And those gears are what makes this a quick change. So you can see we got, we got a shaft right here, and we got an upper shaft. This lower shaft goes all the way forward to the pinion yoke. And then this upper shaft goes to the gear that meshes with the ring gear. <clears throat> so here's where the quick change comes in. Regular gears, one goes on the bottom, one goes on the top. So now we have a ratio. This ratio right now, this is like a 350 gear, and as you can see, we've got the big gear on the bottom, small gear on top. If we change that around, watch out for that gasket, that's gonna change it from like a 350 to like a 480-ish, something like that, which is pretty drastic. Most people would never make that change, but you could. You do have that versatility in the gears. Now, I have been asked, <clears throat> you know, what gear set are we gonna use on the road and what are we gonna use on the race? It's a really good question. We did a lot of figuring out. You gotta figure out 
you know, your transmission and your tire size, all that fun stuff. On the road, we're going to run our four-speed transmission with fourth gear is one-to-one, -one, but we're also using the gear vendor overdrive. So you have to take that into consideration. On the road, we're going to be running like a 350 gear, pretty much this gear set right here. On the racetrack, again, you got to take in that consideration of the gear vendor overdrive. We're not that different. It's going to be right around like a 320 gear we're planning on. Of course, once you actually get out there, that's another story. What happens is you, you get in there and you figure out <clears throat> will the engine actually support this gear set? Is it, is it pulling the engine down or does the engine have no problem moving the car? A lot of that has to do with aerodynamics and how much drag you have. It gets into a whole thing. But, so we got a, a bunch of gear sets and we'll be able to play around with it on the salt. Now you can see this side is still in the process of being fabricated and put together. Brian kind of gave you a little bit of an idea what it takes. You know, it's, there's so much time. Every part is, is literally handmade. We hand machine it. A little bit of CNC go, comes in, but for the most part, everything is handmade. You know, a lot of the times when you hand make stuff, you screw stuff up, throw it away, start over. A lot of time goes involved. But now you can see this side is pretty well complete. It does need to be well, it needs to be finished a little bit, but this is basically what we have and what the finished product is gonna look like. We got our lower control arm, upper control arm, shocks all mounted, all our bracketry is made, all our little tabs. Like we were talking about before, all these tabs, we actually machined the washers and then welded the washers to the tabs and then remachined them it's a huge process. We did that for every tab. Look how many tabs are on here. It's insane. But that's what it takes. There's a reason why people don't do this. They just call up the catalog and order the parts. These, you're not going to find these on the shelf. These are really heavy duty control arms. Normally you're going to see like an inch, inch and a quarter control arm. This is inch and five ace 095 wall. This is pretty stout stuff. On top of that, it's 4130 chrome molly. High carbon, really stout, really strong. But again, that's what we need for land speed racing. We don't want any failures. And on this car, heavier is better. So we're not concerned about the weight. So we'll just make it plenty strong. Really moving forward on the sheet metal. You guys got to check this out. We got all this sheet metal done now. You gotta keep in mind, on a normal like sedan, you have a kind of a back seat area that you would create your rear firewall. Because most of our fuel cells are in the back of the car and your battery. All that has to be separated from the cab with a firewall. So this is, this is our firewall in the station wagon. Our fuel cell and our battery is gonna be back here. This is actually our fuel cell access door. So you'll open this up, there's a little latch that goes on there. And then under that, there'll be a cap you take off and then you can fill your fuel. We got that really nice uh, fuel cell from ATL. It holds 32 gallons, which we'll need because we're gonna run ethanol in this and that gets sucked up pretty quick. And you can also notice that the fuel system will be completely separated from the cab. Working on the steering still. So I've, I machined up a steering column and again, that's just 4130 chrome molly. Made some bushings for our steering shaft to ride in. Cut a hole through the firewall, which is, you know, it's kind of hard to do. It kind of gets you in the stomach a little bit when you're putting holes in your really nice sheet metal. But you got to do it. So that's basically the location. You can see it's kind of clamped up right now. But I've been in and out of this car probably like 20 times. Going in there, make sure everything's fitted and everything where I want it exactly. Now we're gonna start building our bracing to hold the column really secure. You know, you kinda of don't think about it, but a lot of times people use a steering column to brace themselves when they get in and out of the car, especially a race car like this, that you got these tubes and stuff in the way, it's hard to get in and out. Now the, the steering wheel will be removable. It does have a quick release, it's pretty standard. So a lot of times people take the wheel off and they just kinda of rest it on the column. Also keep in mind, you basically, you got your full fire suit. For those of you in the upper Midwest, it's basically like a snow suit. And you got your Hans device, helmet, gloves, boots, arm restraints, and you're trying to get in and out 
and when you got to get out in an emergency you better get out fast we built the whole car kind of around that you can see all, all the room we have compared to most race cars this is a lot of room to get in and out got to make it as easy as possible so that's what we're doing on the steering column right now as we'll, we progress you'll see that mounted welcome to Grismo's garage thank you for watching our show you know it would be really great if you'd hit the subscribe button over here and there's a bell over here someplace too if you ring that then we can make sure you know when new episodes are coming out we really appreciate you being around so uh i'll just sort of awkwardly sit around and play some music while you do that take your time So thanks once again for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.